um, I think what we're hearing is that um, the council would like to go with a mod for dealing with excessive rent increases. The council would like to um, work with um, a modified uh, version of ordinance number one, where um, there would be a mediation process first, and then there would be a binding arbitration piece that would that would follow on for um, those units that would be eligible for binding arbitration, essentially multifamily units built before February 1 of 1995. And that's how the process for handling excess rent increases would be addressed. And then just to run through some, some of what we've heard is that it sounds like there's consensus about requiring um, Want yeah, I was just going to recommend that we get a vote on that first recommendation. Well, and, and when you say mediation, I think we're talking RAC. The RAC right? process. So absolutely. the mediation as in RAC and then binding arbitration. Did so, anyone else want to clarify? So it's like an enhanced one, one or it's also a modified two, an exactly. enhanced two for the rent We've side. We've referred to it as 1A, it really, or you could call it um, two, you know, yeah. But we have no consensus two. on the number yet. <laughs> Um, so, I mean, whether it's eight or five well, or CPI or whatever. Well, it seemed like there, I mean, from staff's perspective, I think that we heard that um, five, that there was a willingness to look at 5% as the trigger point at which if you're doing a, an increase of 5% or more, that's when the landlord would have to um, initiate the, the RAC process. Or maybe more, more than 5%. It's the landlord. As it stands now, it's eight percent. So right. it, you know, if, if the council, it could be anywhere between five and well, eight. You no, know, but I'm saying, it's if the landlord wants to go above five percent. Yes, they would have okay. to trigger the right. um, the rack process. More than, as opposed to five and above. Right. Saying more than five. So right. five point one, or yeah. So they want to do above than five. So, so in regards to that number, five, six, seven, eight. I mean. Let's talk about that. Mm -hmm. I, I think the right number, based upon facts, is six percent. Um, and I know people said heard me earlier reference eight percent, but again, you have to remember I was referencing eight percent over a two-year cumulative. But this with, isn't a cap. This is just when. No, I, the, no, okay. I know okay. it's just okay. the threshold. So, so the cumulative of eight percent plus four percent, when annualized, is six percent. And six percent is the number that at least we're seeing in the rent in the renewed hope survey as as basically the typical median rent increase. And the six percent is the number that is embedded within the Bay Area CPI number. So and, and do you recall the number of of respondents to the renewed hope survey? Because I recall it being Fairly small, maybe well, 300. Yeah, 300. But by the same token, the United States ACS survey of Alameda, when you get rental data for Alameda, it's based upon 500. 500 households get telephone renters get telephone calls, and that's what the annual U.S. Um, uh, survey is. So this is the so. number of. If a landlord wants to do a rent increase of above a certain number, yeah. then that's when they uh, go to rack and essentially share why they should have a higher number. Exactly. I think I think it's based on something. Okay, um, member Ashcraft. Well, and again, we've we've had um, discussions up here tonight uh, about you know, people's incomes um, increasing by significantly less percentage. Um, we heard from speakers that Social Security didn't even have a, a COLA increase last year. Um, I mean, I think we're close, obviously, 5%, 6%, but somehow I'd like to see the triggering point being anything above 5 All right. Um, then Vice Mayor? I'm not, sure we need a, I'm not sure we need a triggering point for the rent. Uh, I'm more interested in having a, a, a filing for um, what has been stated at least many times, the fear of, of eviction, um, when there's a no-cause eviction. So I'm fine with the, the current process that we have for rent review with professional mediation in front of it, and then binding arbitration after it over a certain threshold then. 
Okay, so that's different than I think yeah. from what the proposal. Okay, oh, oh, okay, because yes. what I stated that at the beginning. Okay, okay, um, and so you, you wouldn't use a number. You would just keep it the current rack that, that's on the tenant to file rack if they have an issue with the rent. Okay, okay, so to council me, member Odie's point earlier, don't we also want to avoid going to the rack over a one percent increase? So let's. Let's just focus. Can we focus on this number first? So, so we have a five, a six, and eight, right? I mean, we kind of have. Say it again. We have like five and six and eight being. So about. I don't. So actually, eight was what was in the proposed ordinance. Right. Um, so yes, on that, um, uh, Marilyn said anything above five that then the landlord would go um, would would be the one that, with the burden to file at rack. Uh, Tony, I believe, said six. Um, Vice Mayor said he doesn't. Uh, he'd keep it as is. Yeah, I mean, I think the lower you go, the more he, as the one of the landlord or the tenants' concerns about eight was that we were all going to get eight percent every year. I think the lower you go, the, you increase the likelihood that everyone gets that number. I mean, if tenants are fine with saying, okay, if we set it at five, we can pretty much, I think we're, you're more guaranteed to get more five percent than you are eight percent if you set it at eight. If people are doing four to seven, but, you know, I could go with you know, any of the numbers that my colleagues have, have put out. So, so, okay, so you have a no number. You have about uh, anything above five. I mean, five or six. I mean, six. Tony I, I, has Tony's six. has some. Okay, what if we validity. do? Uh, well, actually, I don't want to really do five and a half percent. I, 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 <laughs> yeah, I don't. I think that's not good. I mean, if CPI um, is over five um, or six, honestly, then what do you do? So I, I would do five. I would do anything above five. Well, we, we we're going to look at this again in a year, so five is fine with me too. Okay, so anything above five. Uh, then that's the majority. I uh, would then go to uh, the, the, it'd be on the landlord to go to RAC to get permission to do above. Right? That was it? So okay, we so want to make point. sure that we have um, consensus on that. Uh, that's the trigger to go to the RAC is anything greater than five? That's the trigger that the landlord would have Correct. to go mm -hmm. uh, the, um, to get permission to be above that number. Well, you know, listen, we're in an emergency crisis situation. I think the typical data indicates six percent, but I think, you know, given the fact that we're in an emergency, I think if we have if we have to go with five or or more, you know, we can all live with that. It's, it's yeah. I just think it's imperative that we collect the data on all rent increases. I mean, just to make sure. I mean, if if every rent increase is coming in at five percent, then we got to look at this. Yeah. Or 4.99 or whatever it so is. So staff is hearing consensus. Okay, but I just want to make You're sure right. that it's 5%, but that is just the notice that has to be provided to the RAC, that it's not a rent cap. That it's not a cap. Not it's a cap. when the landlord would. would. Oh, so right now, the. Oh, I'm confused. I thought that was the trigger for binding arbitration. No, that's the no. trigger for the landlord to. Um, be obligated to notify the housing authority in RAC that it that that how the, the landlord intends to raise the rent above five percent. That way, there's the opportunity a, a landlord-driven opportunity or obligation to get in front of RAC for the mediation. And if um, the RAC makes a recommended um, you know direction on the rent increase, and then you don't like it, you go to binding arbitration. The binding arbitration could be, you could be um, discussing a 10% rent increase or a, or a 7% rent increase, um, depending on what the landlord's proposal is to raise the rent some number above 5%. Okay, and so I had brought this suggestion back because we have tenants that say, and, and you know, that they are t uh, afraid to go to RAC, so they get a rent increase. Uh, they don't go to RAC. Uh, they end up leaving their house or paying these very, very high rent increases. Um, so then I had suggested at the back November fourth, I think, of actually okay, shift the burden. Um, if you come, if they want to do, if landlord wants to do a rent increase above a certain number, that then have them file because then it's not on the tenant, then it's on your landlord, and it deals with that issue of. 
uh, retaliation. It reduces all of it because it's just part of the system. It's part of the structure. Um, but it's not a cap. It's just when the landlord can show up and say, oh, I want to do more than 5%, and this is why. And the further protection for the tenant is that it can go on to binding arbitration. Because, again, you could be pulled before the rack, and then, as it's currently configured, all the parties have to do is show up at the table, and the landlord could still say, nope, I'm going with my 25% uh, recommendation. And from my position, it's a natural deterrent. Right. I, I think the point I, I was that, yeah. made that it, by Ms. Potter that there can also be some incentive that is on, on the parties to... to resolve things at the rack knowing that there's that extra step that is is um, is binding but the possibility exists that if we're going to send every landlord has to go over about five percent has to go to rack and the possibility exists that if none of them are mediated that we're going to arbitrate every increase of five percent or more that's correct okay but we would have a review like in a year that, and that, that option or that's, recourse would that, be available yeah. if you don't yeah. agree with the non-binding decision. And that's very different from what has been coming out of RAP. I mean, I'm fine with that. I still think we need to at least track in some database somewhere you know, every single increase so we know, you know are, are we getting, is everyone getting 4.99s? Right. Or, okay. you know, Okay, but that's right, in this, no but wait, wait, before we go there, could we resolve this one issue? Right. I yeah, want to yeah, make sure you. we're on board with that. You're, so 5% is the trigger that the landlord, anything above 5%, the landlord has, is the one that goes to RAP. And then just for clarification, Mr. Odie's concern that you want to have data on the rent increases, I think I just clarified with the city attorney that, yes, any, any landlord who is requesting uh, well, yeah, all the five percents would go, but none of the under fives would go. No, but okay. I guess what I was trying to say, just I want to be clear here, so you're all saying the same thing, and correct me if it's wrong. But so what you're saying is the way it works, it, the way we have the moratorium is that if the the rent increase is is over five percent, the landlord would have landlord. Depend, it doesn't matter if they're Costa Hawkins or not Costa Hawkins. Every landlord out there would have to provide notice to the RAC, and they would go to the RAC for something over 5%. If there is not agreement reached at the RAC level, which is non binding, then only the Costa Hawkins universe could move up to the binding arbitration. And that's the only thing we can do legally. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. So we were discussing the 5% trigger.